For Morningstar, I'm Christian Charre, coming to you from the Morningstar ETF Invest Conference in Chicago. I'm here with Patty Wee, who's a ETF analyst with Morningstar. She's also our uh, specialist on emerging markets. Now, you, you just moderated a session on emerging markets, and several uh, different points were brought up that were very interesting. Now, one of the uh, one of the points was the fact that there were uh, inflows into emerging market funds were still positive. Uh, they're still positive despite the recent returns that have been uh, less than favorable. But you mentioned that uh, those those flows are going into active strategies rather than uh, traditional cap weight ETFs. Now, what are some of the issues with uh, with cap weighted funds that uh, that make them less appealing for emerging markets? Right. Well, the two very popular funds, there's a iShares market cap weighted fund and there's also a Vanguard one. I think investors are starting to realize actually that these cap weighted funds, they do have some drawbacks. Uh, number one, in terms of country diversification, it's not very good. China and Brazil are relatively much larger than some of the smaller co countries. And so those account for a big part of the index. And with Taiwan, Taiwan's actually not a very large economy, but it has a very large capital market. So that also tends to have a heavy weight in a cap weight index. So those three countries, they can account for about 40 to 50 percent of a cap weighted index. And then the remaining 20 or so countries, they have to share the, the rest of that, you know, 50, 60 percent. So you're not getting very good country diversification. Another issue with cap weighting is that Whereas the S&P 500, when you buy an S&P 500 uh, fund, what you're getting is you know U.S. blue chips, and these are you know very big, very successful, very well-run companies. Um, in emerging markets, a lot of the larger companies they tend to be actually government-owned entities, and when you have a government-owned entity, they're um, they're not necessarily always focused on profitability. Sometimes they have to. Um, fulfill either political goals or economic goals. And so maybe those aren't necessarily the best companies to invest in. And finally, we also note that in a cap-weighted strategy, there's a relatively lower weightings in companies that tend to um, benefit more from the general themes in emerging markets, which is a rising middle class and growing domestic consumption. Cap-weighted indexes tend to have less of those types of companies that will benefit from those trends. Now, one of the alternatives that was talked about during the, uh, the presentation was uh, factor-based strategies or smart beta. What did, the, what did the panelists have to say about that? Right, so smart beta, um, it could be, you know, these are kind of factor strategies like value or low volatility or dividend. These are also, I mean, they're popular in the, for developed markets and they're also more, they're getting more popular in emerging markets. Uh, those risk premia or those, um, those strategies actually do work in emerging markets. So we do see a small cap premium in emerging markets. We do see a value premium. We also see a low vol. Uh, premium. So, you know, those strategies do work and we're starting to see them in products and so now investors can can use those products. What I would caution is that these products and the indexes they 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 kind of have a short track record. So, it's something that I think is interesting. I think it's a it's a good development. I think these products are, are likely to be pretty good, but it's important for investors to kind of really understand how these products are constructed and you know, sometimes they have annual rebalancing or semi-annual rebalancing. It's important to monitor the portfolio and to see, you know, when the portfolio changes, is the portfolio still, you know, kind of meeting your investment criteria. So it's something to watch. I think it's a good development, but um, still a relatively new product. Another popular strategy has been to focus on dividends. Now, one of the panelists was a representative from Wisdom Tree, who manage, who sponsor one of the uh, or the largest uh, emerging market dividend-focused funds in the United States. Uh, what were some of his insights on that? Right. So, dividend investing in emerging markets. I mean, some of his arguments were a dividend investing. It kind of lets the portfolio tilt a little towards quality, you know, whereas, you know, with earnings, you know, there's some kind of, you can use accounting, sleight of hands to kind of manage your earnings, whereas dividends are dividends. So if they're paying a dividend, you know, it is what it is. And so if you weight by the, um, their biggest fund, the Wisdom Tree Emerging Markets Income, they weight their holdings by uh, dividends paid. And it results in a slight quality tilt. It, it um, tilts a little towards value. And historically, the fund has done well, although it's, it has a six-year track record, and over that time period, it has done well. Although I do want to highlight that this fund, it does, it does highlight one of the risks in emerging markets. So one of the things with this fund is that you are trying to get more high-quality companies. Interestingly, what happened in China and Russia over the last two years is that those countries are trying to encourage their state 
state-controlled or state-owned companies to pay out higher dividends. Part of this is to attract more uh, foreign investors into their securities, and also because the government owns these companies when they raise their dividends, the government's also getting more money. So there's a it's kind of a win-win situation. But you know that said, the Wisdom Tree Fund ends up having more of these kinds of companies. So when you're trying to kind of um, get more higher quality companies, actually you're seeing like Gazprom, which is a it's kind of a black box company run by the Russian government. It's an oil company. And then you're seeing these Chinese banks. A lot of investors are very concerned about Chinese banks and the health of their balance sheets. These companies are now have a very significant weighting in the um, Wisdom Tree Emerging Markets Income Fund. But that said, those because because you use um, dividends to weigh the to weigh the holdings, there is a little bit of a valuation, you know, a value bias. So those those names tend to be very they are trading very cheaply. So it does provide a little bit of a, a floor in terms of how how low it can go because it's already trading very cheaply. So there is some um, there are some safeguards there. Now, one strategy that's been extremely popular both in Canada and in the U.S. has been low volatility, and that applies for pretty much every segment of the market, including emerging markets. Uh, and there were some good points that were brought up ag again today in the presentation. Right, right. So low volatility also works in emerging markets. Um, it has, also has had good a good recent track record. You know, one of the important things is that it reduces volatility. So, like in 2008, whereas you know the cap weight it went down more than 50 percent, low, low volatility went down less and so you know to recover from a, a deep decline if you have a, a lower dip it's easier to recover so that's part of the reason why it's it's done relatively well um, yet it, it is it is a good strategy again it's relatively new so it's definitely something we should be monitoring but it does work um, one of the panelists he's done some research into the into low volatility and in the US low volatility it does load a little on the value premium or um, on value stocks and in emerging markets actually there's less of a value tilt so and it's actually there's a stronger low volatility um, uh, alpha. Mm -hmm. So low volatility, it, it, it does work in emerging markets. Interesting. Thank you very much, Patty. Thank you.